Okay, I'm half joking about the warning there, but I'm going to be straight with you. This isn't the video that I thought I'd be making this week. This is going to be a very different kind of video than I usually make. I thought I was going to be making a video poking fun at myself and all the things I got wrong in my prediction video, and then doing another deep trivia and lore analysis of the new trailer. But the one prediction I didn't think I'd get wrong was this. First of all, I'll just say this. I have serious doubts that this game will be a strictly multiplayer or MMO game. Their previous rollouts for such things like Elder Scrolls Online were not hyped like this. If they restricted solo campaigning, they would be seriously shooting themselves in the foot. And I think they're keenly aware that single player gaming is their bread and butter. Now, in case you missed it, Todd Howard said this about Fallout 76 at their E3 showcase. But there is one big difference with this game. It's that each of those characters is a real person. Now, if you've been following the school zone for a while, you know I'm generally one of the most positive and optimistic gamers on YouTube. I don't use profanity, I don't usually criticize games, except for the occasional elbow ribbing at some of the bugs in the game, and you've never heard me do a full rant on a Bethesda game. Well, this video is gonna be a one-time departure from the norm. I'm feeling pretty emotional about the news of Fallout 76, and I'm gonna take a risk here and just vent. If I do let some strong language rip, I'll make sure I bleep it in post, though. But even though my thoughts will be a little scattered, I think this will be a cathartic experience for me, and all of us for that matter. And then I won't have to do any more videos about it because it'll be off my chest. Stick around to the end of the video, though, because it's not all going to be doom and gloom. There very well could be some redeeming qualities that I'll discuss later. But to start things off here, you're probably going to want to strap in. You might want to strap in. First of all, we should make sure we're all on the same page with the wording. Yes, Todd Howard did say you can play solo, but he did not say you could play single player only or offline. In fact, these were his exact words. Because yes, Fallout 76 is entirely online. Is entirely online. We have to take our facts here straight from the horse's mouth. And he was reading prepared remarks off a floor-mounted teleprompter. And you know full well they prepared those remarks with the utmost clarity and caution. In fact, let me just start off by saying that watching their showcase this year was a very awkward experience. I don't remember previous E3 press conferences being this awkward. These were some of the cringe moments I remember. Decorating my house, PVPing, stabbing. Yeah, that was me. Yes, mom, I'm still alive. No, I'm not a mimic. Hang on. There. I just want to make sure nobody tries to smack you because I saw Pete Hines with a wrench backstage a second ago. The resistance is counting on you. <laughs> All right, Hollybos. And they kept fishing for applause. It was so strange. <laughs> now, I understand these guys aren't professional actors or anything, and I'm not faulting them for that, but there was definitely an air about the conference, like they were eyeing the exits ahead of time in case everyone suddenly pulled out their torches and pitchforks. They knew they were going to be dropping a proverbial mini-nuke on us later in the show, and they were just trying to make sure they hacked all their other games before the riots began. <laughs> Look at this Tom Cruise-looking bro trying to get in all the white he can before Labor Day. And the lyrics were oh so prophetic. You better get ready to die, you better get ready to run, your life is over now, you're just a parasite, delivered generously to you by some heavy metal piano? It was, it was all so surreal. Oh, and by the way, this woman who is cheering at the news of multiplayer is a confirmed Bethesda employee. Is a real person. We saw her during the pre-show. If you saw the pre-show, she was the warm-up host on the right side in the theater seats. Once again, 
I'm Ann Lewis. And they also sprinkled the crowd with other Bethesda employees who, you know, are obviously going to root for their own team, as they should. But you can kind of tell most people look stunned at the news to and they're looking askew at the people who are hooting and hollering. But, of course, there were no riots. I, I think people were too paralyzed by the news. I know for me, it was a very quiet kind of confusion at first. I was, I was basically stunned, mouth hanging open a little, wondering if this was all for real. I've been such a fan of Bethesda for so long, I was immediately trying to cling to any excuse that I might have misheard Todd Howard or that maybe this really is going to be a single player game and maybe he was just trying to get the crowd excited for the multiplayer aspect because that's where they're microtransaction cash flow will ultimately take shape. I didn't want to rush out and start making a video on Sunday. I wanted to give myself a day or two to digest what I just heard and see if he would give any follow-up interviews, and he did. So let's take a second and talk about exactly what he means by solo versus multiplayer using his own words, because some people are still getting a false sense of relief by his mention of a single player. First of all, he did not say single player. First, of course you can play this solo, all right? I know, there's a lot. Uh, you have like a thousand questions right now. Yeah, that's right, Todd. A thousand questions. So again, his exact words are solo online, not single player offline. There's a big difference, guys, and we'll go through that. You can play solo, but a lot of people were asking me, it's like, can I play offline? You cannot. You will okay. see, even if you're playing by yourself doing quests, yep. you will see other players. Okay. Also, keep in mind from his exact words that every person you see in the world is going to be another player. That most likely means no scripted NPCs. You will be able to play by yourself without anyone else necessarily traveling with you, but that doesn't mean you'll be by yourself. There will still be randoms out in the world trying to kill you or destroy your settlements. Now, of course, there are things in Fallout 4 that are trying to kill you and destroy your settlements, but there's a big difference, okay? At least for me, and that is the immersion. Let me tell you about my one experience with multiplayer. A few years ago, I was kind of hyped about Destiny. I really didn't know much about it, to be honest. I made an impulse buy at GameStop. I was actually having internet problems that day, and I thought I could bide the time until the outage in my area was over by trying out a new game. Well, I learned very quickly when I got home that I couldn't even start the game. Now, at first I thought, well, maybe it just needs an update, and that's why I can't start the game. But when my internet finally came back on later that day, I discovered that it was indeed an online-only game. Now, the intro started off all well and good, even the first mission. But then I got thrust into the world itself, and the first thing I see are dozens of other players all running around this area on the outskirts of town like toddlers in a playpen. I walk over this one dune and there's a player named like Goober Bot 420 teabagging another player that he just killed. He suddenly notices me, stands up and does that wave thing at me to come over. I've never returned a game so fast to GameStop in my life. Now, I know some of you like multiplayer online games, so I'm not knocking all of them. I don't want to sound conceited or anything at all. That's, that's not my intent. It can be totally fun playing with your friends. It's just a personal preference. I have plenty of friends, but if I spend time with my friends, I want to go out and see them in the real world, you know? My buddies might call me up and say, hey, we're heading over to this dive bar tonight, or we're going to see so-and-so play at the Will Turn. I want to go out and get some fresh air and be in the world with my friends. But when it comes to video games, that's my relaxing alone time. That's when I can unwind, decompress, and enjoy some me time. I want to get completely immersed in a world and feel like I've escaped in the mysteries and lore and all the gaming world has to offer. I don't want to be in a constant survival stress mode or at the very least blowing off other real world players in the game. And if I romance a companion in the game, I don't want it to be a real person, you know? I don't want Sims or Second Life here, okay? And I don't even want to get into the potential nightmares of bullying or harassment issues on the game. Or who knows, maybe that's what the whole Hall Monitor Award was on the shelf. Maybe anyone can just get you banned from the game. I don't know enough about how other games handle that kind of stuff, and, and if I'll even need to go out and buy a headset or a mic, maybe everyone will just communicate with that transaction wheel. <laughs> Look at this. Can everyone say cheese? I don't know how you guys feel or if you even feel the same way. I know this is a risky video for me to make because some people might unsubscribe before they've even gotten to the end of the video where I wrap everything up back in a nice little bow. But to me, immersion is what makes a game great. It's what's always made Bethesda games great. I don't want to be seeing those little floaties above every NPC's head. That's an immersion killer for me right there. And you're gonna see some that say like XX grab him by the 69. How would I even play a stealth character, my favorite kind of gameplay, if the other players can just see the floaties above my head in the underbrush? I'm sure they won't let you have the option to turn that off. Not to mention you'll see the most goofy costumes imaginable because a pack of runts will be running around with bathrobes and beaver masks wielding purple golf clubs. That's just the death of immersion for me right there. In fact, it gets me thinking that the introduction of the pack in Nuka Roll was sort of a strap-in for this 
kind of early seed planning mechanism. After all, they've been working on Fallout 76 for years. <laughs> And if they kill me, do those bathroom beavers get to loot all my stuff? Because if not, how do you loot in the game? And if so, does that mean don't get attached to your junk people? And if it's both, as in they can loot you, but you get your stuff back too, then that's an exploit problem waiting to happen. But before we get into whether the game will even have NPCs, let alone prepubescent trolls, let's talk about the very first part of my story. I mentioned that I had an internet outage the day I bought Destiny. I'm also having one right now as I record this, no lie. Not a full power outage, just some problems with my internet. Now here's the thing, I live in Los Angeles, a major metropolitan city. I can call up Spectrum and they can usually send someone out in a day or so to fix it. So it'll be back up and running by the time I upload this video. So I can go ahead and do the audio recording, play some Fallout to record some game footage and do all my editing without needing to be online. Even my Adobe editing software, which is now an entirely online service, allows you to have desktop applications so you can work offline. But if I was wanting to play Fallout 76 right now, I couldn't. So what does that mean for people who live in rural areas where their internet might go out more frequently and it might take longer for a technician to come out and service the issue? Or even what about people with slower internet speeds? This is gonna be a kick in the balls to those folks. Can you imagine the difference in shooting reactivity between a person playing on an ultra HD fiber optic hard line and a person playing with cheap Wi-Fi? And he said in his after interview that VATS will be in real time, so VATS isn't going to slow down time anymore. And what about pausing the game? Like, if I'm really into a cool build and I get an important phone call, or I'm late to work and I want to come back to what I started later in the day, how would that even work in a shared world? When I pause my game, do I just disappear from everyone else's screens, as well as all my save progress and all my settlements? It just seems implausible. But Paul, he mentioned something about dedicated servers. Guys, there's not going to be a dedicated server for every single one of the millions of people that might buy this game. I don't even know how that'd be logistically possible. I know that a lot of us are grasping for any straw of hope, but we need to come to terms with the fact that this is going to be a Rust clone, just as predicted, or some variation thereof. It's not going to be a single player game with an option to go online and play with friends. Look, if they absolutely insisted on the online element for control purposes and to limit free modding, then I would have been okay with an online solo PvE style game. But it looks like the HPV, I mean PvP warts of this game won't be removable. It's baked in. Let's talk about why they would do this. I know a lot of you may be like me wondering, Bethesda, why? Well, it comes down to a simple notion. They wanted to join the club. They saw all the success that these other Battle Royale survival games had. They wanted to break off a little piece for themselves. I don't see usable vehicles in Fallout 76 so far as I had hoped, but I can guarantee you that if driving games somehow became this overwhelming gaming sensation, then they damn well add a driving element to the game. But it just makes me feel betrayed a little bit because they're straying from what they're really good at just to join the bandwagon. But Paul, they could do what they want, you know, let them, let them have a little freedom to explore. You know, it's like when an all-star quarterback leaves the field to become a baseball player, or when an all-star basketball player leaves the court to become a professional golfer. No one gave a sh whether Michael Jordan could play golf. If I suddenly turn the school zone into a prank channel or a flexing type vlog channel just because those style of channels were rolling in the dough, then just about everyone would unsubscribe, and rightly so, because that's not why they became viewers in the first place. Now a lot of people are going to say they're just trying something new. What's wrong with that? Well, you know what else is new? They could start making real life fusion cars. That would be new. Should they do that? I don't think so. So it just bugs me that such a big fish like Bethesda felt the need to nibble at the other fish. This is basically their answer to the other co-op and multiplayer survival games. I mean, here's what they should have called it. Fall Night 76, your only quest as a player unknown is to craft mines and survive the No Man's Division long enough to counter-strike the rusty arc on the borderlands of the forest. <laughs> and speaking of borderlands, did you guys see the Rage 2 trailer? God, Bethesda, can you just leave Gearbox alone? YouTuber people f copy me all the time. That doesn't mean I have to go out and copy them too. I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, and I stick to what I'm good at. I don't try to absorb and assimilate everyone else that I think is successful. Bethesda had a good thing going. People just wanted more of that. Man, if you're gonna tweak anything, just fix the damn bugs. Don't turn Fallout into a cross between Minecraft and Battlegrounds. I mean, if I wanted Battle Royale, isn't Fortnite free? I mean, what the f Let's get back to the breakdown of the multiplayer element and why this might be worse than we think. Todd Howard said that every person in the game will be a real-life player. 
That means no NPCs, guys. There are no NPCs. Okay. Okay, so that's one of the big differences that we really leaned on. Every character you see is a real person. And that means almost no chance of any real story, unless the story elements are all found on notes and terminals and stuff, which is possible, but a bit of a letdown. Maybe it's just me, but I enjoy the interaction with scripted characters. I like getting side quests from interesting NPCs. And I guess that also means no real vendors. You know, maybe just vending machines, I guess. Like, you know, like Borderlands games. At least the Borderlands games had a sprawling offline single player story. And you're not going to be able to have settlers to populate your settlements unless you convince a bunch of your friends to stand around in 10 shops and sit at the bar and whatnot. Maybe you can get them to pose for you too. <laughs> So there's almost no reason to build beds or stores or bars or whatever. We're basically going to be building empty dollhouses populated with robots if we're lucky. And having no NPCs means the quest and storyline will be sorely lacking. We know there's an overseer who might tell you to go out and do this and get that. We've, you know, basically traded Preston for a robo brain in our fetch quests. That also means no factions, guys. Thus, no gunners or enclave or children of Adam or what. Hey, I want to be a part of the Minutemen. Well, then you should start the Minutemen. Like, you be in the Minutemen That's... and run around and help people. And like, I need help defending my settlement. Okay, I'll do it, but I want some money for that. Without factions and scripted NPCs, this is not going to be an immersive story-driven game. Sure, the environments look amazing. From the trailer, that's the best they're going to look. How are they going to look when someone else in your household starts streaming Netflix in the other room and eating up half your bandwidth? And what happens if we lose net neutrality? Again, I know he said there will be solo gameplay, guys, but with the emphasis on multiplayer and de-emphasis on single player, gives me the impression that this game is built so that you'll get bored in single player and want to play multiplayer. Great. You want to play by yourself? Well, Welcome to an empty world with a few monsters to shoot. And the only way you can get bored in single player is if the story depth and quest complexity are sacrificed. So the game will be structured specifically to make you feel lonely and want to seek out other people, whereby inviting the potential chaos and mayhem and various other PvP issues. So let's talk about how some of the mechanics would work in an online only multiplayer world because I see this as potentially nerfing many of the elements of the game we enjoy like interference free building and VATS. How will VATS work in a multiplayer element? Todd Howard said in his follow up interview that VATS will be in real time. So there goes one of the accustomed conventions. How is that going to be accomplished? Still there. Okay, it's so real how does time. It, so it's real time VATS. Yeah. Okay. Um, not slowing time, really? It do, well, it doesn't slow it doesn't, time. Right, yeah. Personally, I've never used PC commands or mods in my Fallout games, so. If modding is clunky or not even allowed, that won't bother me too much, but those are certainly more Fallout conventions that are biting the dust. I know Todd Howard said they are working on ways to include modding, but it won't be at launch. And so we are 100% committed to doing that in 76 as well. Okay. We will not be able to do that at launch though. And I bet it's all gonna be done through a rigorously vetted Creation Club style system because there's no way they would allow coders direct access to their servers. And don't even get me started on hackers and DOS attacks. Owning your own game on disk and being able to play it offline pretty much makes you immune to that. Not so with online only games. During one of the past holiday seasons, one of the major online games was out of service for a couple of days. I think it was Minecraft, maybe it was GTA Online. You guys can remind me of which one it was in the comments below. But imagine being on Christmas break and really wanting to catch up on some Fallout 76, but you can't now because the server is down. What a bummer that would be. Now let's touch on settlement building because that's one of the reasons I fell in love with Fallout 4. In fact, I haven't even finished the main story yet because I got so sidetracked with all the base building. So base building is obviously going to be one of the quests the Overseer gives you. And Todd did say you'll be able to build anywhere in the game. Both of those things are fine with me. The workshop system looks like a portable gadget, a little weird, but I'm okay with that too. But if this is going to be an online only multiplayer game, even though you can go about it solo, how would the logistics of that even work? Is every single one of the millions of players who buy the game going to have their own 100% completely independent game saves? Or is that going to be an extra cost tacked on? Like if you want your own dedicated server where no one else can f with your settlement, would you have to pay extra for that? Because I'm not seeing how that would be possible from an expense related and logistical standpoint. More likely what's going to happen is that you'll build a settlement and it'll be interactable by other players, which on the innocent side sounds nice. You know, I can build a school zone schoolhouse on the prairie and people can come and check it out and interact with it on their devices. But that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that trolls come along and destroy everything you've built. And by the way, settlement objects are now destructible. We can literally see part of a settlement and getting obliterated in the trailer, here and here. Let's not forget the major theme of The Walking Dead show is that zombies are largely irrelevant, you know, unless they swarm, 
It's really other people in the world that infiltrate your mitts and cause the most problems. And can you guys imagine I built this amazing settlement to show you guys and a pack of trolls teams up to find those nuclear launch codes and then nukes my entire settlement before I've had a chance to record it for a video tour? That's like rust on steroids. They're appealing to the lowest common denominator with this setup. If you watched my trailer analysis video, I commended Bethesda for being one of the most cerebral gaming studios, and I like their games because they don't dumb anything down. Building settlements is going to be like those Tibetan monks building those sand mandalas, you know? Those beautiful works of art that get blown away in the wind to teach them the lesson of impermanence in life. If I want to see that, I'll go visit Nepal. That's not what I wanted a video game. And they probably patched the settlement size limit so as not to soak up too much of their online server bandwidth. So your settlements are going to be relatively small, limited in scope, and not really meant to be permanent works of art. They're probably going to be temporary shelters or campsites that you rest in overnight before moving on to the next explorable area. I didn't want just a Minecraft meets Warcraft type of game. I wanted a Fallout game. You know, if I wanted the Hunger Games, I'll rewatch the movies. I want an RPG people, not a cancer feast. I mean, that Jason guy from Kotaku was basically right again. Bethesda just handed him the last laugh. Now, can you imagine me trying to make a lore video or stopping to give some cool factoids like I do in my trivia walkthroughs and then suddenly I'm dead because a team of scrubs all equipped with junk jets sneak up and hose me with teddy bears? Or even if they don't nuke me, but they see my gamer tag and they know I'm a YouTuber and they just want to photobomb my shot to get their five minutes of fame? It reminds me of journalists who are trying to do a live story and then you see these dweebs jump around in the background waving their hands. The news crew can't legally tell those people to move if they're on public property. Which leads to my next point. In previous iterations, when you paid for a game, it was then your property. The open world sandbox became your in-game private property. Not so in an online-only game. You won't ever have something to call your private property. Another thing that worries me about this setup is that it feeds right into the infrastructure for a cornucopia of microtransactions. And by virtue of that, pay-to-win power gaming. The more some kid has to spend off their parents' credit card, the better equipment they'll have to grief you. I'm praying that's not the case. If you are a Bethesda employee watching this, look, I get it, okay? Capitalism. You've built this massive beast of a company and the beast needs to be fed. Otherwise, you won't be making any games in the future. You probably saved a ton of money not having to hire scriptwriters and voice actors and recording all the NPC dialogue. Great, more money in your pocket. But please don't force microtransactions down our throats. If you guys have watched my past videos, you'll hear me touting the Fallout games as some of the best values for your money. If they turn into EA, oh my god. I just don't want to go there. Take deep breaths, Paul. Take deep breaths. As you can tell, I'm feeling pretty salty about all this. You know, I'll recover, don't worry. I just don't understand it. I mean, look at this posing b****. Seriously? They want to copy Final Fantasy and Destiny 2? If this posing b is included in the game and there are still bugs and glitches they didn't spend their time fixing, then what the b Actually, never mind. They already know there are going to be bugs. I just remembered that Todd Howard had jokes. The Break It Early Test Application. I, I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. <laughs> I did. I read it on the internet, so it's true. And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. So we already know the game is going to be a bit broken from the start, and things don't just work. Great. Love the self-deprecating humor, Todd. But I'm getting tired of Bethesda games always being a testing ground for the next bigger thing, you know? Like the settlement building system in Fallout 4 was an afterthought and a testing ground for this game, even though it's going to be nothing really like it. And now this. I want them to just make a game that is not a testing ground for anything. Just solid mechanics without bugs, deep story-driven plot lines, immersive role-playing, interesting characters with depth and relatability, beautiful graphics, and interesting environments to explore. Like, why does that have to be such a tall order, you know? We're forking out buku bucks for these AAA titles, Bethesda, and we can't get a little love. And what happened with that whole save player one thing anyway? Boy, was I wrong about that one in my predictions video. It really was just a marketing campaign for their old titles. Today, I'm here to talk to you about something serious. The need to save single player gamers. Everyday gamers in search of a single player experience are left behind. Forgotten, neglected, many were rescued and found their way into amazing adventures, but others, well, they weren't as fortunate. For the price of just a few Nuka Cola quantums, you can share the fun of an epic single player journey today. 
Look, I know some people out there watching are getting pretty hyped about this, and I know some people like multiplayer games. Please don't get the wrong idea that I'm trashing multiplayer games or MMOs. If you're the kind of player who really enjoys savage shooters, or you know, if Overwatch or Destiny is your jam, more power to you. I mean no disrespect, I promise. Those games all have their place. It's just not my thing. And when it is, I like them to be separate from my RPGs, you know? I like sushi, and I also like chocolate, but I'm not going to put them into a blender together. I built this channel around thoughtful, story-driven RPGs because that's what I enjoy, and I can't be alone in thinking that, otherwise I wouldn't be nearing 100,000 subscribers. And the relaxed, single-player, jigsaw puzzle-style sentiment-building aspect of Fallout 4 was such a blessing in disguise. I would go so far as to say that if Todd Howard had spoofed the world at E3 by saying there was no Fallout 76, but instead a single-player Elder Scrolls 6 game with the ability to build your own intricate forts and castles, it would have been music to my ears. I would have forgiven him for wasting a week of my time putting together a deep analysis of the Fallout 76 trailer and been like, good one, Todd, now please take my money. And even with Fallout 76, I would have been delighted with a co-op mode like Far Cry 5. Damn, I was so hoping for a two-companion option like Far Cry 5. I mean, I feel like those balloons on the floor on Reclamation Day. That's me. Colors of the school zone, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, no more Kate or Hancock or McCready-style companions. If you want a companion, it's going to have to be another player. And you have no control over their actions. So bring on... Dragons! <laughs> oh my god, he just ran in. It was pretty clear at their E3 showcase that the Starfield and Elder Scrolls teases were an attempt to calm the backlash and turn those frowns upside down. They've never teased games that big so far off in the future. They just didn't want to get lynched. One thing I alluded to in my prediction trailer but I forgot to elaborate on was that I didn't think Fallout 76 was Fallout 5. I think there is a single player Fallout 5 coming in the future. I think Fallout 5 is ultimately going to be the next true companion story installment of the game, whenever that eventually releases. But, you know, time is a cruel mistress and it's probably a few more years away. Okay, if you've made it this far, thanks for hearing me out. Now to my upsides. I don't want to leave you guys in the state of depression, especially on a channel like mine where I'm normally known for my positivity. So look, I do see cool new monsters, cool new weapons, new settlement building elements, new explorable areas with lush environments and seasonal and weather contrasts. I'm probably still going to play it because I'm a YouTube gamer and Fallout is my jam, but I'm going into it with dark sunglasses, not rosy colored glasses which is unfortunate because I wanted to be super pumped about this new release. I would have been more happy to hear of a 2019 release instead with Todd Howard saying that it's going to be their most story-driven release yet and co-op was just an optional mode for replay value. Or why couldn't they just have made a Battle Royale DLC? That would have been perfectly fine. I would have been delighted to sacrifice a DLC slot in the monthly pass just to have a starting game that was a spiritual successor to Fallout New Vegas. Maybe there will end up being a way to lock everyone out of your dedicated game world unless they have an invite, but I kind of doubt that's going to be possible because it just seems like a leap in technology, but we'll see. And if that is a possibility, then I can see doing live stream building lessons with a group of you guys in the No Mod Shop class. Although it wouldn't be called that anymore because everyone's going to be No Mod Building. <laughs> So here's my plan. I'm not going to play the beta. I'm going to focus my energy from now until November on finishing the storyline in Fallout 4 and continuing with the plethora of amazing building lessons in the Nomad Chop class that I still have in the syllabus, so to speak. Seriously, I have a feeling we're going to be looking back on Fallout 4 as one of the best installments of the franchise for years to come. So if you still love Fallout 4, my channel will still be a hub for great content in that regard. Of course, I'm always going to be squeezing in new games when I can. You know, for example, I'm actually pretty stoked about Red Dead Redemption 2 and, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is probably something I'll be featuring in my Saturday Night Specials because there's a lot of factoid potential in Tomb Raider games, as well as Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Have you heard about Assassin's Creed Odyssey? It takes place during the age of Greek mythology and you play a Spartan assassin. That will definitely be featured in my Saturday Night Specials. If you're really into post-apocalyptic games, Metro Exodus may be our next great hope in the spring of 2019. I mean, we didn't even know Fallout 76 was coming out this year, so we can think of it like a little snack before the next major SP meal, you know? But there still is one way Bethesda can redeem this edition of Fallout, at least for players like me. Create a single-player offline DLC that populates the world with NPCs and quests. If they do that, they will have unlocked a trophy achievement and all will be forgiven. Of course, we'll probably have to pay extra for that, which is poor, but that's an option. 
I know this video is very salty, guys, and I apologize in advance if you're offended by my rant. I'll be back to normal in the next video with my usual upbeat self. I've been an evangelist for Bethesda games in my videos for years, so they can forgive me for this one rant. Probably the only Bethesda rant video you'll ever see on my channel, but this is something I felt very passionate about and needed to vent. And it does feel good to have gotten it off my chest. Hopefully this was a cathartic experience for you too, and now we can just get back to the positivity, like continuing with my Nomad shop classes, the settlement building contest vote video, which should be out this weekend, and some more Let's Play videos. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You know, was I being too harsh? Was I saying exactly what you were thinking or didn't I go far enough? Hopefully this wasn't too much of a controversial video and most of you will stick with me as we overcome this speed bump in the world of gaming, continue having fun and getting back to business. Throw a like on the video or dislike, it's totally up to you. Still love you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.